Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first ever Grand Finals for the Hungry Hungry Hippo Campo Invitational. On the left, we have Eric playing Yellow Fabled Beasts, and on the right, we have Cam playing Green Prey Birds. Both players have started the game with a nice friendly handshake and are drawing their cards. It looks like Cam is going to go ahead and take a mulligan here and draw a fresh set of cards to make sure that we get this grand final match off to a solid start. Eric is keeping his hand and going to do a little friendly cut there on Cam's deck just to make sure everybody's keeping everything above board. Eric will be going first, drawing a card for turn and playing exactly what you want to see a Blessed Cathedral Nexus for turn one. Cam is going to begin his turn now, and he's going to follow that up with a Hurricane Highlands. Both players now have their Nexuses on board. Eric starting his next turn here, refreshing his cores, thinking a bit about what he wants to do next. Setting a burst, just in case Cam has any tricks up his sleeve. And now we're going to play a Hundun. This is a new Fabled Beast from set 4, and whenever it attacks, it can stop an opponent's spirit from being able to block. There are no spirits here, so Cam is just going to take this damage directly to life, and Eric will pass the turn. Cam is going to refresh his cores here, and begin thinking about his move. Cam is going to move forward with his move here and put down a totem pole, three cost green nexus from set four, and follow it up with a bark maiden lucerium. That makes sense because if the bark maiden lucerium wants to attack, Cam will ramp one core onto a three cost nexus. Cam is going to set a burst, also to prevent Eric from doing any little tricks there, and we are going to see an attack from the Bark Maiden Lucerium, and a single core placed onto the Totem Poles. No flash from Eric, and Eric will take that damage to life, Cam passing the turn back to Eric, Eric drawing for turn and refreshing his cores, time to have a little think about what to do. Bless Cathedral number two coming down. Also being cored up, if Hundun were to die this turn or next, Eric will not only ramp a core, but also draw a card from that Blessed Cathedral. However, Cam will trigger his burst here and bounce the cored up Blessed Cathedral back to Eric's hand. This makes you think, what plan does Cam have in store here? Cam's going to refresh his Bark Maiden and his cores and play down a seven cost Tokawa with one core on it. Cam will core up his spirits and think about his next move. Entering attack step, Bark Maiden Lucerium is striking yet again and placing a core onto the totem poles. That's no flash from Eric, no flash from Cam, and another life. Eric down to three, Cam also at three. It's anybody's game. Eric is going to draw a card, refresh his cores, and refresh his Hundun. And we're going to core up the Blessed Cathedral, put down the other Blessed Cathedral that was recently returned to hand, and swing in with the Hundun. Because we have a spirit now that we can select, we can select the seven cost Tokawa so that it cannot block, and Cam will take that damage to life. Cam will begin his turn by drawing a card. Let's see how he retaliates here. Cam is moving his cores around, paying the soul core. Ah, this is the Ostrara. So when Cam pays a soul core here, he then is able to ramp a core onto Ostrara. And we're also going to play an Alaron. Alaron will also ramp a core. Lots of core ramp going on on Cam's side. Cam is entering attack and attacking with Bark Maiden Lucerium, ramping a core onto the totem poles. Eric declines to flash, will take the damage to life, and trigger an Absolute Ice Shield, paying the cores to end the battle step. 
This will, of course, force us to enter our first Hungry Hungry Hippocampos phase of the game. The Hungry Hungry Hippocampos board has been placed. Both players must take all cores from their trash and place them in the center. On a count of three, two, three. All right. And we're off to the races. The Hungry Hungry Hippocampos are feasting upon those cores. We do see a soul core jettisoned off to the side. At this point, Eric has captured two. Cam has not captured any. It's really looking quite good for Eric, although it did appear... We'll have to maybe check at the end here. It did appear maybe Cam got the soul core during this Hungry Hungry Hippocampo munching fest. Two cores left. All right, we're going to take a pause here to place them into the catapults and launch them back into the game playing field. Just one core left that we're fighting over now. Let's see who gets it. Uh, we may have to take another... Yeah, we're going to take another pause here. We'll launch it back in. Oh, that's a pesky little core. Oh, it really could go to either side. Oh, and it's off to Cam. All right. Let's count them up and see where we landed. I'm going to have to wait here for Cam to retrieve the rest of his cores. It looks like we do have four cores collected by Eric, one of which is the soul core. And seven cores collected by Cam. And let's remove the Hungry Hungry Hippocampo board from the table so we can assess the damage. Uh, it does appear that the soul core was in fact Cam's soul core. So Eric is in now in possession of both soul cores. And since that ice shield ended Cam's battle phase there, we are now off to Eric's turn. We're going to set another burst and play a dual eagle. So we do see some, some strong fabled beasts on Eric's side of the table. Hundun and dual eagle are two of the strongest. Hundun is swinging in. Who will Eric select? Eric is selecting the seven cost Tokawa as not being able to block. Cam will follow this up with an all run, tapping the dual eagle and killing the Hundun. Eric did this uh, move here strategically so that way he could ramp two cores, get some extra cores there. And also when Hundun dies, he's going to reveal the top three cards of his deck and search for a fabled beast, put the remaining cards on the bottom. So we do see Hundun, Thorn Prison and Burning Force. So the Thorn Prison and Burning Force are gonna go to the bottom, but now we have a new Hundun ready to go in Eric's hand. Passing the turn back over to Cam. Let's see how Cam follows this up. So Cam is lacking a soul core now, as Eric has pointed out. So no Astrara business from Cam's side of the table here. Well, we don't need it. We're going to play an Emerald Sanctuary. Core it up. And distribute our cores among our spirits here. Cam has to be thinking that this is another Ice Shield on Eric's side. So he wants to be very careful about placing cores in the trash, as they may then end up in the Hungry Hungry Hippo battlefield, which means they could then be taken back by Eric. So strategic move here. We're going to take a life from the Tokiwa. Cam did remove two cores from the Tokiwa so that it could refresh. He's considering attacking yet again, instead going in this time with the Bark Maiden so that he can ramp a core onto the totem poles. Eric is going to play an Exhaust Nexus from his hand. He's gesturing to the two spirits, but he's forgetting that Bark Maiden is cored up, so only the Ostrar will die. Quite unfortunate. So we are going to be taking damage here from the Bark Maiden, and due to that mistake, Eric is going to trigger the Ice Shield, but unfortunately have to dispose of his Eagle in order to end the combat phase. Uh, quite the misplay on Eric's side, but uh, perhaps he can follow it up with a good round of Hungry Hungry Hippocampos. One thing to consider here, though, is Cam very strategically only had one core in his trash, whereas Eric had quite a few, including both soul cores. The players are electing to use the canals on the side to begin their match. 3-2-1, let's go. Oh, the catapults are launching the cores. 
astray onto the battlefield. Uh, both soul cores still fair game. Oh, no, Cam has captured the first soul core there. Oh, this is neck and neck. Cam is really benefiting from this hungry, hungry hippocampo phase here. Uh, if you remember, he entered this phase with only one core in his trash. Now I see at least four, one of which being a soul core. He is capturing quite a few. Not looking great for Eric here during this phase, which is not what he needs to see after that exhaust nexus misplay. We do see some cores enter the catapult zone there. Cam launching them back in. Ooh, we see another core captured by Cam. And now we're fighting over these two. We might have to pause here to recenter them. Let's see what the players decide. Now they're just going to keep going at it. Oh, Cam has captured the last regular core and the soul core. Oh, wow. How the tables have turned in favor of Cam here. Look at all of those cores. Cam now has a lot more cores than he started that turn with, as well as two soul cores. <laughs> Eric shaking the hippos, hoping to see more, but nope. Just two cores. Oof. That does not feel good. Eric now starting his turn fully at a field disadvantage, as well as only having three cores. How can he ever recover from this? Absolutely brutal Hungry Hungry Hippocampo phase. Setting another burst. Oh, he doesn't look too pleased with that. Even if this is another ice shield. I don't believe he has the cores to trigger it. However, if he can manage to do it successfully, he might be able to get some of these cores back. Cam is going to core up his spirits here. And play down another Hurricane Highlands to add insult to injury here. And drop a Mother Meadow Bird. Cam is going wide. He doesn't know what's set in the burst, but he knows that Eric does not have a lot of cores here. So he's trying to consider what could be face down, what could be in Eric's hand that could possibly stop him. Maybe a Thorn Prison? Swinging in with a 7-cost Tokawa, paying two cores to refresh it. And let's see what Eric has set for Cam. Taking a life, triggering a Dream Bomb, and only able to bounce the Hurricane Highlands Nexus. Not what you needed to see. Let's see how this unfolds here. Cam is going to swing once again, and there's a handshake. That's the game. All right, and with that, it's time for game two of the Hungry Hungry Hippocampo Invitational's Grand Final. Let's see how this game is going to shake out. We have both players keeping their hands and drawing up. Cam is going to go first here and drop a Hurricane Highlands. That is exactly what you want to see. I couldn't imagine a better opening move for Cam here. Oh, well, Eric is going to follow that up with a Phantasmal Paradise. It looks like he's not going down without a fight. Also dropping his 4-cost Nexus, essential for his deck. Cam thinking about his next move very carefully. Mother Meadowbird. Passing the turn back over to Eric. Eric is going to draw for turn and weigh his options. Oh, here he is, the Hungry Hungry Hippocampo himself. He's also a Fabled Beast, so Eric is going to be able to tap his Phantasmal and draw a card. And then we're attacking with 4k Blessed. Right into Cam. Let's see what Cam does here. No flash, no flash. Cam is going to take this damage to life, which means that Eric is going to heal up to 6. That Hippocampo was indeed Hungry Hungry. Cam is going to spend three cores here for a strong draw. Let's see what he draws, and let's see what he discards. Drew an Ice Shield. He's going to discard a Thorn Prison. He's also going to discard a 7-cost Tokawa. Too expensive for right now. Cam is then going to follow up with a Bark Maiden Lucerium. Although he does not currently have any targets to ramp cores onto. 
He will set a burst and pass the turn. Eric will begin his turn by ramping a core, drawing a card, and refreshing his Nexus and Hippocampo. Dual Eagle hits the table and also draws a card off of Phantasmal Paradise. Eric is going to decide to core up the Dual Eagle here, in which case the Hippocampo is 2k, the Eagle is 6k, but neither one of them can be blocked by level 1 spirits. Both of Cam's spirits are level 1, so essentially Eric's entire board here is unblockable. 6k bless, no flash, Cam's going to take it. Eric is going to go up to 7 life. 2k blessed, unblockable, no flash, no flash. Cam is going to take that as well. Eric is up to 8. Cam is down to 2. Can Cam recover from this? What's his plan to get out of this? Cam is going to pay quite a few cores here to drop Feng Wang, allowing him to ramp 3 cores thanks to Hurricane Highlands. He's going to place those cores onto Feng Wang, and we're swinging, baby. 10k. This damage is going to go through. It's only going to deal one damage. However, Cam can elect to bounce one of Eric's spirits to then refresh his Void Lord, which he will then do. He's then going to end his turn, leave his big baddie up to block Eric's blessed units. Eric is going to refresh, and instead of seeing the eagle come down, we're now going to see Hundun hit the table. Hundun is a Fabled Beast, so he will draw a card. And we're going to set a burst, just in case things go badly for Eric here. I'm going to move some cores around here, thinking about where we want these cores to be placed. Hundun is going to attack first and select the Feng Wang. Feng Wang can now no longer block. Cam is going to retaliate here with a Thorn Prison just to prevent any further shenanigans. And we're going to chump block the Hundun here with the Bark Maiden. Since there hasn't been any target here for Bark Maiden in a minute. Back over to Cam. Cam's going to refresh his cores. Cam's not in a bad spot here. Eric does have quite a bit of life. He's asking about the number of cards. Eric has eight cards in hand. That's definitely suspicious. Cam is going to play the new Ascend Tokiwa. In order to do so, he must sacrifice a Prey Bird, and he chooses to sacrifice Mother Meadow Bird. If Eric's spirits were refreshed, they would now be tapped down. However, it doesn't really matter too much. When Cam attacks, he can reveal his hand. There is a Meadow Bird in his hand, so he can discard all three cards and now draw up to the same number of cards that Eric has, which we have established is eight. And just like that, Cam is solidly back in this game. He has a full hand, full of tools, to deal with this situation. Eric is going to take damage to life. Two damage, in fact, because of the dual symbols on the Tokawa. Cam is considering whether or not to attack with the Feng Wong as well. He decides to do so. That's 10k. And if the damage goes through, he can bounce one of Eric's spirits to refresh him. He's going to bounce the Hundun here. The Feng Wong will refresh. Will Cam attack again? He will. He decides it's now or never. He's going in. An additional damage, bouncing the Hippocampo. Eric is going to use this moment to go ahead and Ice Shield. And with that, we begin our first Hungry Hungry Hippocampo phase of Game 2. You may notice the players have elected to include the additional hippos on either side. After game one, they decided that there was too much spillage in the arena, so they did elect to add the blue and orange hippos back in. Three, two, one, let's go. Hungry, hungry hippocampo phase begins. Both players going at it. Cam has two in his bin, Eric has one. 
Okay, I'm grabbing a few more. Okay, I'm up to three, four, five. Oof. Eric not performing very well here. We do see a few of these cores get tossed around. Cam has definitely mastered the Hungry Hungry Hippocampo technique. We're taking a pause to reset and back at it. Ooh, we did see those cores fall back to Cam's side. Oh, but we did grab one there on Eric's side. Now that we've finished, we can count up the cores and see how we did. It does look like it went in Cam's favor. Ooh, there's more hidden in there. Knocking over some cards off of Eric's deck, but that's okay. All right, Eric is gonna take a look. Oh, I only see a single core falling out. In the Hungry Hungry Hippocampo Invitational, it's important that you know how to play Battle Spirits, but it's even more important that you are skilled at Hungry Hungry Hippocampos. As we can see here, Eric only getting to refresh two cores, but he is going to follow that up with the Hungry Hungry Hippocampo that was bounced to his hand, drawing a card, and then also playing Hundun. Eric has to choose his next move very carefully. He may want to try and trigger another Ice Shield here if he can. If he can do so, all of these cores are going back into the Hungry Hungry Hippocampo Arena, allowing for him to once again take his chances. So that is what is going to happen. Cam is going to pay for. Very skilled strategic move here by Eric. Perhaps allowing for a core reset as all of those cores that Cam just worked so hard to eat with his hippo, now back in the center ring once again. All right, we've set the stage. Three, two, one. We're ready. We're munching. We're hungry, hungry hippocampos. Oh, both players going at it. Cam once again showing his skill here as a hungry, hungry hippocampo player. However, it doesn't look like doesn't look like he's actually beating Eric this time. It looks like Eric might be tying it up here. There don't appear to be any soul cores on the line, so it takes a little bit of the pressure off for the players. Going for a slower technique. Oh, we're hammering down. Look at Cam's hand movements here. Just a fluid hand gesture there as he's flicking his hippo. Oh... We do see those cores reset, but then one does fall to the side of Cam's Hippo. The other one appears like it wants to... Oh, who knows? Could really be either player's core here. All right, another reset. Uh, and it goes to Eric. Okay. Time to count up these cores and see how we did. It looks like Eric's gamble may have paid off here. Cam still has quite a few cores, however, Eric was able to get some of those cores back, punishing Cam for activating the Absolute Ice Shield. Well done by both players here. And with that, it's back over to Cam. Cam is going to refresh his course here, uh, by no means hurting for cores. However, he did lose a few from that round of Hungry Hungry Hippocampos. Cam setting another burst. If this is another Ice Shield, we could see another Hungry Hungry Hippocampo face. However, Cam is going for the throat here with the Needle Shot. If you remember, that Needle Shot was drawn off of the Ascend Tokiwa attacking. Really putting in the work in this game. And we play another Feng Wong, ramping us another three cores on Cam's side. Unless Eric has some sort of flash speed follow-up here, it's not looking very good for him. We are considering where we want to place cores here. Tacking with the double symbol Tokiwa, discarding our entire hand, revealing a prey bird to draw up. Let's see how many cards we get. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is a very interesting matchup for this deck. 
as the Fabled Beasts do like to draw cards, which allows for the Tokawa to also draw up. Alright, we have a Fang Wong, potentially dealing double damage here. Can Eric do anything in response? And with that, congrats to Cam, our Hungry Hungry Hippocampo Invitational Champ.